Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. I'm working on a video on a doublet antenna that I built. And it's taking longer than usual because I keep experimenting with it. It's the first time I've built a doublet and uh, I'm just fascinated by it. It's a very old antenna. Anyway, um, while I'm working on it, as I said, I'm experimenting with it. And this morning I lengthened it by adding 30 feet to each leg. And I thought this might be a helpful little tip for other new hams that are just starting to play with antennas. Uh, let's say that you need to lengthen an antenna. You know, if you, if you build an antenna and you cut it long, like you should, you know, maybe a foot long, uh, and then you put it up and you start to tune it with your antenna analyzer, you can cut wire off the ends to shorten it up. But if, what if you want to go the other way? What if you want to lengthen an antenna? Well, obviously you just splice some wires onto the end, right? So splicing two wires, and here we have uh, some solid copper wire, and you can see I've already bared about an inch and a half on each end. Uh, what would be the strongest way to splice these together? Well, there's a thing called a lineman's splice, and it's what I like to use. And it looks like two hands gripping each other like this, right? Um, and it is definitely a strong splice. And, and the way that I do it is, uh, especially on heavier gauge wire, I'll use pliers. I'll, I'll put a uh, bend in the wire, like so. And then I'll take that bend and I'll just sort of give it a bit of an angle, like so. And then you put this onto the other wire, like that. And I will crimp that down to hold it. It's always easier to do when I'm just doing it to get it done. Now I'll take the pliers and I'll wrap that little end around. And this is going to be really hard to do and stay in frame on camera, but hopefully you'll get the idea. Sometimes you just sort of grab it with the pliers the long way and you can sort of pinch and turn and guide that around. You know, when I do this outside, it's so much quicker and easier. I don't know. I just don't think about it. When I'm thinking about it while I'm trying to demonstrate it, I'm kind of turning and pinching that down as I go, and then I'll just kind of go around it and cinch that down like so. And now we'll take the other end of the wire and we'll put a bend in that. And then I'll uh, take that around. Yeah, we'll put there. We'll put our loop in it here first. Get it started. There we go. I usually take it around the wire three or four times for this demo and speed here. I'm just going to do it once or twice around. Okay, so there's just a couple of times around. Ideally, you want to have it go around two or two or three times, but that's going to provide a very strong joint you know they're they're not going to pull each other apart and all we really have to do now is just flow a little solder in to create our splice get this in my third hand here there we are get it where you can see it now again, like I said, you, you really want to come around maybe twice on each side to get a good grip, you know, but that's the basic idea. And I'll fire up the soldering iron. Now, uh, while the soldering iron's heating, um, when I did this outside, I used my butane soldering iron. And uh, mine, the tip can get kind of hot, get, get, can get plenty of heat, but if you're outside and you're in the wind, a lot of these you can unscrew this flue guard and uh, now you have a pencil torch. You see that flame there? A nice little pencil torch. 
And when you're outside, you can use that pencil torch. In fact, I'll just do this one with it here. We'll just heat that up real good. Get the tip of the flame on it for a moment. Get the wire good and hot. And the solder just flows right in. So there. Okay, now it's soldered. <laughs> just that easy. Um, so yeah, a butane torch like this, if you're doing this outside where the antenna is or up on the roof or whatever, these things are extremely handy. And they're, I think they're around $30, $40. This is a blazer. Um, they come with a whole range of, of tips that you can use for different applications. Uh, I, I use this thing to death. But that's the basic idea behind the lineman splice. And uh, you end up with a very, very strong joint. I have, uh, back when I was at the house, I had an antenna that was a 40 meter dipole and I extended it to 80 using the lineman splice on the ends. And it was up for six years uh, through all kinds of wind and storms and stuff and I never had any problem with the joint failing. So that's, that's the strongest way to put the wires together. Um, what if you're using stranded wire? Well, it's not as easy to work with because these little, all these little strands are gonna fly out in all kinds of directions. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just, I'll twist them up a bit and then we'll uh, take the soldering iron and we'll just tin it lightly. And that will keep the strands together and allow us to do the, the loops for the lineman splice. And I'll do it again with this side here. We'll, uh, you can look at the wire where it comes out of the jacket and you can see which way it's twisting so that you twist in the right direction. If you twist in the wrong direction, you'll be untwisting the wire at the point where it goes into the jacket and you'll make a weak point. So I always look to see which way they're twisting coming out of the jacket. And we'll just tin that just to get a little, just a little bit of solder flowing through the, the strands to keep them together. Make it act like one wire instead of a bunch of little ones. And then I can do the same thing that I did before. I can put a bend in it. Oh, it's still hot. It's easier with smaller wires. I'm using heavy gauge, heavier gauge stuff like you'd use for an antenna. So it's, that's why I'm using the pliers. You know, this never works well when I'm demonstrating it. Honestly, when I did this outside this morning, I was done in minutes. There we go. And then this side. Put our bend in there. Take it around the other wire. And again, I'm just doing this once around. You'd, you'd want to strip back about two inches of wire, you know, so that you have a couple of wraps, but we're just doing this for demonstration here. And then we'll just solder it. Use the traditional iron this time since I'm inside. And how much solder you use is up to you. I mean, you could you could uh, put a bunch of solder here so you really fill it in. Um, I remember one ham was up in, uh, up in Fort Wayne was telling me he doesn't like to do this because he said the RF skin effect, the RF flows on the skin of the wire and the solder is going to uh, oxidize and create resistance at that point and, and all. Well, that antenna that I had up with this splice in it, in it I had actually two sets of these splices in it. Uh, it was up for six years, and the characteristics of the antenna never changed. So, there we go. And that is plenty strong. I mean, I, I can put all the tension I want on that, and it's not going to come loose. And uh, it's not going to be any weaker, I don't, I don't think, than the actual wire themselves. You know, So, that's the lineman splice. That's the way I uh, lengthen my antennas. And I hope you found that useful. I'm going to get back to work on that doublet video. It's going to be an interesting one. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. 
Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.